Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel and this is a bonus video of our chat app series. So previously when I implemented the chat app series, Firebase was allowing us to use the storage. But now um, I've came to know that the storage is now basically available only for the upgraded plans. And if you don't have the upgraded plan, then you don't, uh, you cannot access the uh, storage which basically makes the video or the series quite invalid at least for the for the images part uh, of the of the series so 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 basically uh, to help with that uh, what i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna implement an alternative to the storage the rest of the stuff would be again firebase but we'll just use a different storage for our images now how we can do it that's something that i'm gonna show you now if i load my app you can see uh, that let's say i have this test channel that i want to check so i'm gonna send some message let's say hi okay and let's say how are you so these are the two messages that i've sent and now let me send you send a message basically so i'm gonna select a camera you'll see that the camera was enabled and now when i click on this it won't upload the file and why it won't upload the uh, image because you know that uh, we don't have the storage enabled on the backend. So we need to fix that. So basically uh, to fix that, uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use Superbase. Uh, Superbase is again um, an alternate. It's kind of a provide same features as Firebase. But uh, since our all rest of the implementation is already done on the Firebase, so I'm not going to change all these things. In fact, I'm just going to change the storage flow. So what we will do is that rather than uploading the file to Firebase storage, we'll upload that file to our Superbase storage. And then from there, we'll access the URL and start like showing uh, the images to the to the users, right? So how can we do that? The first thing is that uh, if you are new, you can just start over, like sign up to this uh, Superbase. And then from over here, you can just create a, a new project, something whatever you want, uh, I had like whatever you want. So I'm going to say, let's say chatter compose. You can define a basically a password for your database that, that you are going to use. And then uh, I think then there's nothing more that you can do. You can just click on this create new project and it will create that project. Now I have already created this project that is over there. So I'm not going to recreate the same project again. Now, when you open this, you'll you'll see something like this. Now, over here, these are the sections. Now, what we need is that we don't need the authentication because we are already authenticating user to the Firebase. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use storage. So, let's just click on the storage. Now, when you get over here into the storage, you'll, you'll not see anything. Like, everything is quite blank. So, what I'm going to do is that let, just, let me just create a couple of things. Okay. So, I'm going to use the bucket as chatter underscore images which means this is going to be chatter images and one more thing that i need to do is that i need to make it public repository uh, public bucket because uh, since i'm not using any sort of authentication or anything like that that is the reason that i have to make it public so that i can publicly access it without any issue now this is one thing uh, this is done right so the next thing would be to go to the policies. Now over here, uh, when you get into, into the policies, there is no policies. So what you need to do is that you need to select your bucket. This is my chatter images. That is the, my, the bucket that I'm using. And from over here, let's just click on the full customization. Now over here, normally, uh, basically, uh, the idea is that uh, normally, basically, you don't want to allow the no anonymous user or like non-authenticated user to to directly access the urls of the of your content but since our case is quite different because we are just using this storage and we don't want to uh, port our whole implementation for authentication and stuff like that so that's why i'm gonna use it this like this right so and then uh, the next thing would be to make sure that this is default to all public roles this means that all the public roles uh, would, would basically uh, be applicable to this policy and then we'll click on this review and then save policy. Okay. So once you do that, this means now that your policies are set up, your bucket is set up. Okay. There is no image like nothing inside this. And now what we need to do is that we need to jump into the code and start working on implementing this um, Superbase. Okay. 
So how do we do that? The first thing is, let me just switch back to Android. Now over here, uh, let me just say, uh, right now we have these classes. So I'm gonna use, click on this and then create a new class and let's call it Superbase Storage Utils. Okay, this is going to be a util class that I'm gonna use. Over here, let's just create a bucket and call it chatter and make sure that it is like same as what you have. So it's like chatter images. I'm gonna copy that. Okay, and we'll go over here and paste this. Okay, so now the bucket is ready. Uh, now what we need to do is that we need to integrate the superbase, right? So so for to integrating so to integrate superbase, what you need to do is that you need to get over here into the build.gradle file and you need to add a couple of things. So let me just pull those changes. So I'm gonna say this, okay? These this these will be uh, downloaded. Okay, so once you basically get that, the next thing would be to go to the top, call it wall, superbase is equals to create superbase client. And now over here, you'll see that we need our URL, okay? And along with the URL, we need one more thing that is going to be the key. So these are the two things that are required and you need to provide these values for, uh, so to basically to access it. And how do we get those keys? So basically to get those keys, what you need to do is that you need to go to the home, okay? And now when you scroll down, you'll see these values over here. So let's just copy, let me just copy these values. So I'm just gonna copy that, go to my Android studio, paste that key now again these keys and these urls are really important so make sure to store them uh at a somewhere where basically nobody can access it and uh, i'm since i'm gonna change these values uh so that's why i'm not uh, editing anything i'm just like uh placing everything that is there uh, but one thing is for sure that i'm gonna change these values later on okay now once you do that the next thing would be to basically set up the storage right so in, in inside that i'm gonna say install storage okay now now this means that the client is now set up the next thing would be to create a method that will allow us to upload the images to the server right and get a url for that so now let me just do that so what i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna create a suspend image and i'm gonna say upload image instead of a uh, url i'm gonna say uri which is uh, something that we'll need and in return what we are gonna do is that i'm gonna return a string to the user okay now again this these values are quite wrong so we are not gonna use that now the thing is the first thing that we need to do is that we need to get the extension of the file uh, to identify what kind of file it is either it's a um, JPEG or uh, PNG or whatever path that the user has accept, uh, file that user has selected. So, so basically what I'm going to do is that I'm going to substringing after the last dot and we are getting whatever there is. If there is nothing, then we are just diff setting it to JPEG. Now the next thing would be to create a file name and uh, this file name can be either your uh, current time in millis or you can do is you can say UUID, UUID dot random UUID. Okay and then assign that extension to it. So the next thing would be uh, to basically create an input stream for this. So I'm gonna say wall input stream is equals to context. Now we don't have a context over here. So basically now what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna say wall context as a context that will basically uh, be something to use and then we'll say content resolver, right? and then not content resolver will basically help us create that stream from the uri so basically this will basically help us to um, get the byte uh, bytes array from this right and i'm gonna return null if like the stream somehow doesn't r return anything and i'm gonna make this nullable as well okay that's one thing now once you do that uh, the next thing would be to create uh, to upload that file so i'm gonna say uh, superbase.storage.from and then over here we'll define that bucket id and assign these things now over here uh, what you need to do is that you can define it as read bytes uh, the file name is again the path uh, that you can use you can uh, add a folder path as well let's say if you have a superbase and over here inside the storage you can create this new folder right 
So you can create different folders if you have different kind of uh, mechanism, but I'm gonna use uh, the plain root folder. That's why I'm not adding any root folder into this. So that's why it's going to be simple file. And uh, this input stream is again converting that to read read bytes. Now these values will be updated, and these values will be up, like uploaded to the to the backend. Now what we need to do is that we need to access the public URL of this uh, file that we have created, right? So I'm gonna say get the public URL for that image, and then uh, I'm gonna say something like this uh, from the bucket, and we'll just get rid of this dot public URL. And then we'll define that path for this. Okay. So now once you do that, now basically you will get that public URL from there. And now you can that return that URL into this. Now in this whole process, there can be cases when you get some sort of exception, right? When if let's say if there is anything from the SDK side. So for that, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to enclose everything inside a try catch. Okay. And then in case of exception, we'll return it as null. And we'll also gonna, let's say I'm gonna uh, print the stack trace of whatever we're getting. So that should be something that we will do. So now what we are doing is that we are getting an extension from the image. We are creating a file path and then we are creating an input stream to, to get the bytes. And then we are uploading the file uh, to the backend. And then once the file is uploaded, we'll basically get that public URL for that. And then based on that value, basically we do something like this. Now this is done the next thing would be to i uh, use this and uh, try to upload images and see if the images are being uploaded or not so now i'm going to go to the feature side go to the chat chat view model now inside this chat view model over here this is the section you can see that we are basically sending images or sending image messages uh, over here what we were doing is that we were again using some random uuid for creating an images and then from there, we are uploading that file. Once that is uploaded, then we are basically sending that URL to the storage. Now, in our case, this thing is now not needed because again, uh, the Firebase is now cannot be accessible. So I'm going to get rid of all these things, right? So we'll just remove this and these lines as well, right? Now, these values are there. Uh, these values are gone and uh, we are even not even going to use these values as well. So, so this will be just something like this that we have. We have a URI that basically the Superbase uh, upload file uses and uh, we need a public URL from that. So I'm going to say view model, view model, view model scope dot launch, right? And then inside that we are going to create that um, object uh, for that storage util. So I'm going to say storage utils is equals to super base storage util super base storage utils and over here we are going to pass that context now the object is created the next would thing would be to get a download url from this and now we get this download url and now this download uri will see basically will make sure that it's not null if it's null we are not going to upload that file if it's not null then we are going to pass that so that's something that we'll do and now we'll rerun the code and uh, this time we'll hope that once we run this and we start sending these messages uh, we'll start we'll be able to um, get those messages or like we'll be able to upload those images to the to the uh, server and start getting the images again okay so the app is being loaded now okay we got this we got that um, channel click on the channel and now let's just try uploading an image so i'm gonna select the camera let's just click on this send that okay something went wrong i'm not sure what but okay there is i think there is something yeah okay so basically uh the sdk is now crashing and uh, it's saying that there is nothing super base network we are not able to identify the client that we should use and I think uh, for one thing that I basically missed over here is that you need to get over here and add this one more uh, dependency. Like basically these are related to Ktor. So I'm going to add these three values over here. Uh, this is basically for, for Ktor client that it requires. So once you do that, you sync it again. Okay, so now you can see uh, again, the project is loaded. Let me just open that create camera 
this time select that image now we are uploading that image and now you can see that the image is being uploaded and you can see that image over here as well so that was it for today uh thank you so much for watching the video if you have any question queries please comment down below and i'll try to uh, answer each and every one of you we have a food app series going on where we have completed the customer side and now we are going to implement the restaurant side so if you want to learn how to develop a food delivery app you can subscribe to my channel and check that playlist in the in the description so thank you so much for watching the video i'll see you in the next video till then happy coding bye i hope you liked the video and if you did please like the video comment down below and share the video with your friends for similar content you can subscribe to my channel you can also follow me on instagram and if you have any queries you can join my discord server where we discuss different kind of things so thank you so much for watching the video have a great day bye